Hey everyone, I'm Rather Incoherent, and today I want to talk about the main fighter William York that I played in the custom campaign Cyclopean Foundations off the camera. This deck was partly because I just wanted to see a chainsaw recursion of Will York, and also because no one at my table had ever actually sat down and played a boring, super optimized William York. Everyone was always trying cool stuff. They were doing Flex Yorick, they were doing Sled Dogs. I don't remember the other Yorks I've seen, but I've seen a lot of them, and I haven't seen nearly enough of Bandage's level 2 Guard Dog to say that I've seen someone properly try to squeeze everything they could out of Will Yorick, so I decided I was going to have to be the one to do that. This was the sole fighter for a three-player team. No one else really contributed anything to the fighting aspect of it. It was entirely my job. We weren't really sure if William Yorick could do it. I would say that in earlier scenarios, Yorick did struggle a little bit as the three-man fighter, and that even in late scenarios, you need to, like, not get horribly unlucky. If you draw six enemies in the first three Mythos phases in your three-man team, Yorick's going to have a really hard time dealing with that, because he needs a hot second to slowly dig things out of his short supply, killing enemies relatively slowly at the start, before he's really set up to take on the world. He's good enough that he can three-man fight, but he's a little bit tenuous at it. He's an incredible fighter, not many people can three-man fight. The list is probably like almost just Daniela, Yorick, Cho, and Tony. There's probably someone I'm forgetting that deserves to be there. But even great fighters like a Mark Harrigan don't really get, like they're drawing more cards and they have more utility. That's what's making them great. They're not getting more action compression for the fight. Will Yorick has action compression out the wazoo. Specifically, he has guard dogs, just guard dogs. But you'll notice that, one, they Lightning Bolt engage. So, that's a free action. That's already incredible. But two, they deal one damage when they take damage or horror. Bandages heal damage after you take damage. You can see the synergy here. Now, there's a lot this deck was supposed to do. I'm supposed to put a chainsaw on my hands, throw it at somebody, and then dig it out of their corpse. It's a really cool combo. I've got E-Cash level 3 to put more charges on the chainsaw, and stuff like this gets even more support going into the next expansion because of the hard um, cleaning kit is basically an emergency cash level 3 that you wear around your neck, and in exchange for being an accessory slot asset that you pay for, it costs no experience. It's a guardian card. So, like, that's really cool for future chainsaw synergy, I guess. And maybe that's the critical mass for pure chainsaw you were to be a real thing, but my experience, having had both in the same deck, because they do both fit, is that chainsaw is really nice. Having access to three damage attacks is just an incredibly important thing for a fighter to do. But I have access to machetes and beat cops and meat cleavers and like plenty of other ways to deal two damage plus one damage. So in this deck specifically, chainsaw wasn't really necessary. I had one scenario I finished where both guard dogs and bandages have been getting cycled for ages. And as a result of that, I had ended the scenario with like eight charges on a chainsaw that I just hadn't been using because I would like lightning bolt a guard dog, beat cop him, and then draw three cards rather than using a charge on my chainsaw. And then a boss never showed up. So I was like, oh, cool. Uh, was it better to draw cards or use charges on chainsaw? Like that was easily handled. It was not a problem, but I, I don't know what was right technically. So I really like this deck as a whole. It's maximum fighting outputs ridiculous. It's honestly overkill. Having had these be like probably machetes for most of the campaign, I would say that Act of Desperation is a cool card, but E-Cash level 3 and Chainsaw level 4 is so much experience for such a minor gain. Like, this is 52 experience, and if you cut 8 plus 6, that's 14, it goes down to a 38 experience stack, which is still a lot, but with fully upgraded skills, a second safeguard, two charismas, like, it's a fully fledged deck. The Chainsaw E-Cash is what makes it really expensive, and it's the thing where I was like, did I really need that? Aren't I more reliant on my ally assets than the Chainsaw anyway? I think it's a good deck. I think if you're getting this much experience, you have little reason not to go for Chainsaw in addition to this stuff. But Beat Cop Guard Dog Bandages, which of course you can bandage your Beat Cop after using him as well, that combo is the core of what makes this so strong. Because you can't scoff nurse a Guard Dog, but you can scoff nurse the bandages you're healing it with. It's a very, very strong combo. It makes Will Yorick one of the best fighters in the game on higher difficulties where tests are just harder to pass. And he's so close to S tier for me. I don't know if he deserves to be just in or just out of S tier. He's like right on the border, but he is one of the most impressive fighters in the game. He's also like literally invincible. I don't put much stock in that, but he is literally invincible if you care about that sort of thing. He's not gonna die. 
Also, I found that I consistently had both Cherished Keepsakes in the discard pile and rarely ever killed the first one anyway. So when you give me 52 experience, I may as well just get more free horror soap since the, you can replace this, right? And it doesn't exile, it just discards the old one because it wasn't defeated. So that was like why this is happening if you're wondering about that because of the obvious anti-synergy with your ability. I'm using it as three soak, not four. Obviously, there are some quietly good cards here, like Atta Crawlshreds and Lucky and Overpower and Vicious Blow that I'm not really covering. Savior level two, some of the best action impressions of the game. Like, I only run a third of my deck as Guardian cards, but of those five Guardian cards, four of them deal damage, deal damage, deal damage, and move, and also free action engage. The amount of action, oh yeah, this is also a Guardian card. Let's me swing over without engaging, you know, in case I miss the guard dog. The amount of action compression these Guardian cards give is insane. It's why Guardians are so good at fighting is because they get cards like this. And it's also like a really effective low experience way of fighting. It's the reason that people say you don't have to go for big weapons in Guardian is because you have weapon-esque allies. You have stuff like Survival Knife 2, which honestly might have been better than Chainsaw. I'm not convinced it wasn't. It's not as cute. I really enjoy throwing my Chainsaw at people. I mean, to be honest, Active Desperation decks probably want more hand assets and not a second Branding Thug, and this might have been wrong. I like Chainsaw. But in Will Yorick, all the strong stuff is the stuff down here, right? Chainsaw's fine. I didn't regret having it, but I never felt like I needed it. And coming down to level zero, you can see, unsurprisingly, a pretty similar deck. We're running Machetes over Chainsaws, Enchanted Blades as our backup weapons. We're still running the Bandage Guard Dog package because the Beat Cop's only good once you upgrade it. And we're still running out of crossroads with our in the thick of it. We banked one of the experience. And we have just like live and learn and lucky and stand together. It's all generically good stuff. Going over to our first upgrade, because I think first upgrades probably do deserve to get shown on these type of videos. We went for double beat cop, double charisma. Because with 10 experience, that lets me get both guard dogs in play and a beat cop, or vice versa. The beat cops work with bandages now. And I thought very aggressively that bandages with allies was the thing Yorick did that no one else did as well. And I feel very confident in that statement. This upgrade path felt really strong at every point. I got tons and tons of action compression out of my Guardian cards, and I felt very good about Will Yorick throughout the entire campaign. He's a really cool, really unique character. It's nice having your discard pile just be essentially your hand as far as your mostly asset deck is confirmed, or concerned rather. He's cool. He's cool, he's interesting, he's unique, he's very powerful. I would recommend Will Yorick to literally anyone and I think if you've been around the community for a while, you're probably not surprised to hear that sentiment. Will Yorick is a beloved character for good reason, and I'm happy to have played him. I'm hoping I find a cool different deck and a good reason to play him again in the future, because otherwise it seems to me like he's going to be stuck being one of those characters where I know they're incredible and I know I like playing them, but I gotta go play Amina Zidane to figure out if she's as bad as I think she is. Like, that's what happens to the best characters when I love them and their deck. Like, once I optimize it, I feel confident that is the best version. I'm like, oh, I don't get to play you anymore. And that's a shame, because I'm going to have to play Yorick again. And when I do, I won't learn anything. But it'll be fun. He's great. I love him. Two things. One, I forgot to mention, I have a community Discord now. And in that Discord is a channel with all of my deck lists and all of my theory crafts, at least the good ones posted. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, that's where to find it. Link in the description. And also I should do an outro, which just didn't happen on this video, which is weird. I don't know how that's happened twice in one recording batch, but here we are. Anyways, thank you for watching. A huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. I appreciate it tremendously. And I'll see all of you in the next one.